There don't seem to be many videos or instructional guides about how to assemble a wieldy survivor, so this video is going to cover assembling the upper portion of wieldy survivor. The frame does not need any parts replaced, so I have not taken it apart. However, you will get to see the assembly of the bolt and barrel assembly of the gun. Before we show the reassembly of the gun, we will show how to disassemble it, at least for field stripping. First, we will, of course, make sure that the gun is entirely empty. And next, we will need to remove the disassembly pin. The pin right now is pinched in place. It has to come down and out a little bit. It's pinched in place by the slide. So the easiest way to take this apart is to put pressure on the pin with your index finger and to slide, pull the slide back so that it begins to engage the pin and push it down. As this occurs, the pin will drop free. Then allow the slide to come forward. This pin will want to drop this this block will want to drop free as well. And the springs and their guide rods will come loose also. Go ahead and remove the pins and guide springs. And at this point, the slide should simply come off. To remove the firing pin for cleaning, you'll push in on the firing pin and pull out the cam pin that holds it in, and then the firing pin and firing pin spring will come out as well. This is as far as you'll want to take it apart for most of your cleaning. I'm not going to show disassembling the barrel assembly and bolt further, but I will show the reassembly of those parts as I replace some parts in this gun. The reassembly of those parts will be essentially the reverse of the disassembly. First we'll begin with assembling the gas system of the pistol. Take the barrel like so, place the gas piston on. Next, put on the gas regulator and thread it down until the threads start showing above the end of the regulator. Next, we'll install the guide pin and spring. One thing you need to do with this gun, according to the instruction manual, is place Loctite on all of the threaded surfaces. We'll insert the guide pin and spring in from the rear and use a screwdriver with significant enough reach. Once we get it pushed through it will thread into the gas piston. Make sure to press the gas piston all the way back against the barrel extension so that we can adjust the guide pin to the proper depth. We'll go ahead and thread the guide pin into the gas piston block. With the piston block all the way back against the receiver, 
we want to ensure that the guide pin is screwed in far enough that it does not extend into this gap or else it will damage uh, another part of the gun. The guide piston rod should be below flush with that block there and should allow the piston to move forward and spring back. Next we'll replace the rib on top of the barrel. We'll take this pin holder here and place it into the cutout on the barrel. Like so. This hole is just a guide hole for a pin in the front of the rib. These two are the threaded holes that screw the rib on. We'll go ahead and add Loctite to each one of those holes. Next comes a relatively difficult part where we have to install the gas regulator detent into the rib at the same time as we put the rib on the barrel. There will be an obvious flat slightly curved side to this that lays against the barrel itself and engages with the tooth in this regulator which is why we've screwed the regulator back so far. Place the spring and the pin into their channel. Next, we'll install the screws that hold the rib on. These use a small Allen key. We will just snug those down. And now our barrel and barrel extension are placed together. We'll go ahead and depress this detent and screw the regulator back out to where it engages properly. Next, we will reassemble the bolt. As you'll see here, I actually have two different bolts to show this process. One of them is a new bolt that's already partially assembled. This will be what we see actually going into the gun, ultimately. The other is a my old bolt that is completely disassembled and will show part of the assembly on this bolt.
The first thing we're going to do is install the extractor. The extractor here is actually on this particular one a spring type extractor from a Remington 700 rifle. Some of the other bolt assemblies will use the rivet type extractor from a Remington 700 depending on when they were made. This particular extractor is slightly broken and one of the parts that has been already pre-installed on my new bolt here. Nevertheless, we'll still be able to show how this works. First we'll take our extractor and we'll find this groove here. This is the groove for the ejector pin and this is the groove for the installation of the extractor. We want the extractor positioned correctly so that the flat edge is down towards the bolt face and the sloped edge is out so it can click over the lip of a cartridge. We'll begin by slow, there is a small groove on the inside of the bolt that this rides in and we'll begin by sliding one ear into that groove and simply rotating this piece around and into position. Like so. Next, we will install the ejector pin. First we have our ejector spring which goes into this channel and next we have our ejector pin. This pin does not exactly match the pin on the new bolt. I believe it is partially sheared off um, but we will install it in the same way it came out. The geometry of this pin is very important and we'll slide it back in here so that this cross hole here that this that the locking pin goes through um, is clear. If it's turned wrong it will block that hole partially. Next in order to hold in the ejector we will install the pin decator. This pin has a beveled end and a flat end and several uh, surfaces carved into it. We'll want the beveled end pointing down towards the bottom of the bolt on this side with the hole aligning with the firing pin channel through the pin and the flat face facing forward. This surface here will be what holds the ejector from coming out the face of the bolt. In order to install this, we will go ahead and place our pin in from the top, making sure that it is properly aligned with this channel here. We'll also make sure our ejector is properly aligned and press it in until the pindicator snaps down and into place. The ejector will attempt to rotate the pindicator out of position, so you will have to adjust it as you continue with the next step. This cross pin is the next piece to go in. It will go through this hole in the bolt, the square hole. But before we do that, we must install the bolt into the barrel assembly. We'll slide it in from the rear with the flat side facing down. This cross pin acts as the locking lugs of the bolt itself. And we will insert it 
from the ejection port side and press it snugly through and into place. Ensuring that the firing pin hole is aligned within the bolt, we will want to make sure that the locking lugs are evenly spaced and do not extend out past the barrel extension to interact with the slide. At this point, the bolt is locked into the barrel extension. Our next step will be to replace the firing pin and firing pin spring. Place the spring onto the firing pin and insert the firing pin into the bolt from the rear. Press it in and hold it forward with your thumb while you take the cam pin. It has a groove cut into it with notches on either side so it can go in either way and insert it down to hold the firing pin into place. Now your bolt and barrel assembly are reassembled. Next, I have removed the grips of the frame to show how they install on. You'll want to keep this metal clip in this position within the grips. The grip will slide into these two grooves and you'll want to make sure to press the edge leading edge of that metal clip down so that the grip can continue to slide up and into place. Next we will begin the reassembly of the gun. This is basically your field stripped position and we will reassemble the gun from field stripped. First we will slide the bolt to the rear position, turn over our slide and our barrel assembly and insert the barrel assembly into the slide along the guide lugs in the slide. The bolt should drop into the cam channel on the inside of the slide. Press it forward and ensure that it closes and locks. Holding this forward we will insert our recoil springs and their guide pins. We will also take this block and place it in in this orientation so that the hole is accessible from the side as this is where the locking pin will go, the disassembly pin, and so that it leaves a nice continuous channel for the uh, nice continuous guide for the slide to ride in. This is the piece that we had to ensure our gas piston would not strike against by extending beyond the edge of that lug. Holding the slide all the way back, we'll begin to slide the frame into position. We want to get it far enough forward that it holds this block into place. And then we will have to click these guide rods into their position as well. Once the slide is back, 
a helpful trick is to insert the magazine partially or even fully into the frame and then pull the slide back as though you were operating it. The back edge of the magazine follower will engage with the slide and hold it in place tenuously. You will see then that this hole lines up, but sometimes it does not line up exactly. If you press the barrel all the way back, you can take the disassembly pin and use the flat edge by placing it forward to align the parts in the hole, spinning it around until it lays up into its hole here. We're going to pull the slide back just a little bit and insert that piece, but we're going to hold it up just a little out of the way so that we can take the magazine part way out and then hold the slide while this drops in to position. Now our gun is completely reassembled and ready for use.